Let's do one last one, which is quite short, before we break. Psalm 67. And this is the last of the trilogy. And the title is A Prayer for God's Blessings. And this is, as with 65 and 66, a picture of the coming kingdom. And if we divide this into three parts, we have the request, verse 1, the psalmist request. And then we have the purpose of the request, verse 2 to 5, and then we have the result of the request. Verse 6 to 7. Now, before we start, you remember Jabez. No? Some people say it's my Christian name. <laughs> Whatever. I haven't changed ICM. But if you remember 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Yaris, uh, Yaris keep it saying it's my Christian name. Yaris. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. First Chronicles. Can I say what? What do you say? Corinthians. No, no. Chronicles. Sorry. Chronicles. First Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 10. Slip of the tongue, no fault of the mind. First Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. I preach this, I don't know when. But the five things, the five things in the request, number one is God bless me. Number two, God, enlarge my territory. Number three, God and your hand will be, a, will be with me. Number four, God, keep me from evil. Number five, God, that I may not cause pain. Because after I get blessed, I get so rich and powerful, I might hurt others. So this is a sermon by itself. But I just want to point to you, this was, okay, if you read verse 9, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, right? So this was an honorable man. So was David. And he made a request to God. And in verse 1, Psalm 67, because we just finished with Psalm 66, uh, David's prayer was heard, no iniquity in his heart. So, in, verse, in Psalm 67, he began his request. Verse 1. God, be merciful to us and bless us and cause His face to shine upon us. God, be merciful to us and bless us. Of course, God had been merciful to them. If you read Lamentation, Lamentation chapter 3, Lamentation chapter 3 Verse 22 Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 Through the Lord's mercies We are not consumed Because His compassions fail not Which means If God had not been merciful and had not been compassionate, they would have been wiped out. They would have been consumed. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22. Verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. What is new every morning? Mercy. Is mercy. They are new every morning. 
So, with that in mind, David prayed, God, be merciful to us and bless us and cause His face to shine upon us. You know where this verse came from? Numbers, chapter 6. Okay? We quickly read. Still not lunch yet, okay? Numbers, chapter 6. Okay, Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. The Lord bless you and keep you. The famous quote, always quote by Thomas here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. So even in this Three verses 24, 25, 26. Uh, he speaks, he points to us, he reveals to us God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. He's referring to God the Father, the giver. The Lord make his face shine upon you. It is the Son. Because we are not the light, he is the light. We are reflecting his light. He makes his face shine upon us. And then the Lord will lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And that is the Holy Spirit. He is peace. He is the comforter. So anyway, that is uh, Numbers. Let's go back to Psalm 67. And cause His face to shine upon you. So that was the request. Short as it is, but it covers comprehensively what the psalmist desire of God. Verse 2. The purpose of the request. For what? For what? That, 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 that your way may be known on earth. Your salvation among all nations. So by showing mercy and your compassion to us, all the people of the earth will know who you are. That your way may be known on earth because we have been blessed, that we can be a blessing, your salvation among all nations. If you look at Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, Isaiah 55. This is also another familiar verse. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, what, what can we do? No, we can't. We can't measure up to you. Your so, God, be merciful to us that through all that you do, all the mercy that you show to us, people will get confused, but they will know <coughs> it is you. That your way may be known and your salvation among all nations. Now, this, past, this Psalm 67 can be used for a mission uh, sermon to challenge people. But today we are not talking about that. Maybe I do it in Japan, I don't know. <laughs> Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Why? Because He is on the throne. Now you see all this, uh, let the people praise you, let the people praise you, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. And before that, uh, salvation among all the nations. Do you remember? The verse we started today with Zechariah 14, verse 16, and then 17. This points to the future, the coming kingdom. Happen yet? Not yet, but it is in the future when he is on the throne. For you shall judge the people 
righteously and govern the nations on earth. For you shall judge the people righteously. And the judgment you will find, you will find this even in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. You can read 19 as well. Revelation 19. Verse 15. <coughs> Revelation 19, verse 15. Revelation 19. This is when the, when the church and Jesus they are reunited. And Christ will judge the Antichrist and all the followers of Antichrist. God will judge them. But in verse 15, after he has judged all the Antichrist and, and the followers, verse 15, now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself threads the winepress of the fierceness fierceness and the heart of the Almighty God and so on. But he will rule them with a rod of iron. And then the judgment, you turn to chapter 20. Chapter 20, if you read from verse 11 onwards, let me just do a quick reading. When we come to Revelation, I will teach more, okay? But we just read, he will judge righteously. How shall he do so? Then I saw a great white throne, verse 11, and him who sat on it, from those, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, everyone, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. So you have the book of life, and then you have other books. And the dead were judged according to their works and the things which were written in the books. Not book. The one book is the book of life. If your name is in the book of life, you are saved. But in the other books are all the records of all the things that these people have done. The sea gave up the dead who were in it and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works, which were described in the books. You understand? But in the singular book of life, it is not about your works, it is about your salvation. You are saved, your name is there. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And this is the righteous God who will judge righteously. At that point in time, you cannot even uh, uh, engage the Queen Council of England to come and defend you. No way. That is because you have been given the chance before God pulled in the fishing net. Because when He pulled in the fishing net, He will separate the good fish from the bad fish and that's it that is his judgment so back to Psalm 67 for you shall judge the people righteously this is Revelation 20 and govern the nations on earth verse 5 let the people praise you O God let all the people praise you and this is the purpose of the request that all that the your way be known that salvation among the nations uh, be there and that the people will praise you <coughs> and then the result the result verse 6 and 7 then then, then the earth shall yield her increase God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear Him. Has it happened? Not yet. It is the future. So you look at, you look at this. Last part, the result is, the earth shall yield her increase. 
The earth shall give her produce. The earth shall be fertile. It shall be fruitful. No more famine. And then our own God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear Him. To hold Him and I mean to behold Him and His word in reverence. And that is the ultimate, ultimate outcome. So, since we are talking about mission, I mean, I'm the one talking about mission. Okay, so what is the goal of mission? What is the goal of mission? For some, it's uh, to go and uh, preach the word. Okay, okay, preach the word. To um, save souls. Okay, save souls. But from Psalm 67, it is that God be glorified. That is the ultimate. Yeah. That is the, because yeah, if you don't preach, if you don't go, uh, they won't get to hear. You don't preach, they don't know. So you go, you preach, yeah, and then you 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 bring in the harvest. So you so you you, you bring in the souls. But at the end of which, uh, some people get saved but still don't glorify God. Mm -hmm. Come to church, hold their arms, and so on. But if we stop at this, uh, if our, the goal of mission is to preach the word, we don't care whether you hear or don't hear. I just preach, I come, I just take 45 minutes, I preach, I don't care. But I want to save souls. Okay. But after saving souls, goodbye, that's your problem again. And some people are just happy to make sure your name is registered there, take your, your slip and then go. But you need discipleship. Jesus said, now go in into the world and make disciples so that they will grow up. Paul said that they will move from the milk to the meat. So that when they know of God and they know His word, then they will praise Him. They will glorify Him. And that is the final thing, you understand? So that all the earth, everyone, all the ends of the earth shall fear Him, shall praise Him. That is the ultimate goal of mission. <coughs> the Father, that is also our ultimate goal. That we shall continue to praise You, to fear You, to worship You, and also to lead others to You, that they too will glorify Your wonderful Lord, we have learned much even in these last three Psalms that your coming kingdom is one that we yearn for, we look forward to, we behold because indeed it shall be in your midst, it shall, we shall be in your presence and we shall see the fruitfulness of the land and knowing that your blessings shall be loaded upon each and every one of us forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. So please help me pass the message. I will send email to